Hey, Curtis, what are we watching this week? Hey, guys, this week we're watching A Mighty Wind meets The Princess Bride <laughs> meets a mid-70s Black Sabbath concert. <laughs> this week we're watching This is Spinal Tap. It doesn't surprise me that you're going Christopher Guest. Christopher Guest. <laughs> 70 Sabbath. 70 Sabbath. So, welcome back, listeners and viewers, to another week of this. Of Let's Talk About Flicks, the weekly podcast where we discuss a movie that ties into the monthly theme. Uh, this is our final week of March. Uh, we are wrapping up Movies About Music Month with quite possibly the best movie about music that fits our taste anyway this is spinal tap <laughs> i am one of your hosts oz <laughs> and i'm curtis and uh curtis you brought this one to the table we had a little last minute switcheroo uh-huh. uh, yes. which is fine uh and i think this is a, a perfect swap this was a this was a uh, what am i looking for here i'm looking for a baseball trade like, like a sports trade that benefited the team, not realizing they were going to be benefited. <laughs> this uh, is uh, this is Ho- the Ho- Jose Quintana for Dylan Cease and uh, Eloy Jimenez. I would what? go further. I would go uh-huh. further and say this: this is the uh, this is whoever we gave up to Baltimore for the uh, Pedro Strope Jake Arrieta mm-hmm. uh, the trade. We're a couple of Cub fans here, by the way. Yep. So if you're not a Cubs fan. Strike it from the record and stay with us anyway. And for um, reference, for reference, Baltimore got Scott Feldman. No, that I I knew that you would know the uh, the so. Scott Feldman, <laughs> the Scott Feldman, mm-hmm. Corey's younger brother. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> the, the he is the lesser talented of the Feldman brothers. <laughs> he's not a frog brother. For, <laughs> he's a Feldman brother. Corey throws a mean two seam fastball though. <laughs> he does. He, he does. does. Sit. It's, it's, sit. it's got good. Two-seamer. It's got good tail action to it. <laughs> yeah, yes, it does. But you can catch that on our other podcast, Celebrity Baseball Players. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so this is your movie. So before we get to the characters, we do want to throw a shout out to our uh, patron. Melissa from Woodstock. Yeah, uh, <laughs> she's she's loyal subscriber. Melissa. She's a loyal subscriber. And once the uh, once the month kicks over next month, and we get the first uh, the the first chip in, we'll have two Patreon subscribers <gasps> to mention. So, wow, we've st- doubled our productivity. St- we have. Stay tuned, so we get to drop two names. Hopefully, we get to a point with all of you loyal listeners and viewers that we have to do a two part podcast. Where one part, we just spend the first hour and ten minutes just thanking our Patreon subscribers <laughs> by name. And then we actually get to the show. Uh, Let's talk <laughs> about lining our pockets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if, if it comes to that point, just expect like a like a, a Wall Street style like ticker running across the bottom. So if you're looking for school cancellations or Patreon subscribers, yeah. you're in the right place. <laughs> or so. what's going on with the Dow Index. <laughs> right, either one. Uh, and so we got our characters for this uh, this tight little musical yep, film here. Yep, Oz, you got um, the characters for This is Spinal Tap. I do. Uh, for those of you that aren't aware, This is Spinal Tap is a rockumentary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a unique that is, genre film. Yes, it is. It's a rockumentary that is... Um, Hosted and produced by Marty DeBerge. Uh, <laughs> the Marty DeBerge. And the his, Marty DeBerge. And his U.S. Navy hat. <laughs> <laughs> right. Played by Rob Reiner, who actually was the director of the film. So it's kind of got this meta level of, yeah. I'm going to direct myself directing a film. Um, and uh, so we've got Marty DeBerge as the director of this rockumentary as he's following around the band Spinal Tap. Uh, Spinal Tap consists of a trio of constant faces, David St. Hubbins, played by Michael McKeon, who's the lead singer. Lead guitar is Nigel Tufnell, played by Christopher Guest. And last but certainly not least, uh, we have a bass player with a name this week, Derek Smalls, mm-hmm. played by uh, the one and only Harry Shearer. A couple other prominent characters in the film that you see in more than one scene are their manager, Ian Faith played by Tony Hendra, uh, as well as uh, 
Janine Pettibone, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, played by the great June Chadwick, uh, who's David's girlfriend slash step-in manager. Um, <laughs> just, she's the, she's and, the Yoko. Yeah, she is definitely the Yoko of, of the band. Um, and, uh, and so that's really it. We got a bunch of other characters. Billy Crystal's got a small part. Dana Carvey's oh, there's, got there's so many little bits. So cameos. many, you know, yeah, and you know, you got Fred Willard who steals every scene he's in and every movie he's in, <laughs> um, Fran Drescher. Yep. Uh, I, I you know, almost they're... worked the nanny into my movie marriage, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought she and wasn't that... in it enough to, to, no, uh, not quite yeah, enough. Yeah, to, to, uh, to, she was to in a couple that. of scenes, but not quite enough. But yeah, so there's all kinds of little little here's and there's mm-hmm. but uh but those are really our prominent six yes. and marty de Berge's really not even all that often but but he's he's these six are are there so yeah. all right uh good luck on this next part tell us about the plot of this is final tap <laughs> well i would say what well, plot? <laughs> exactly <laughs> there there are a few through lines there's essentially two two through lines throughout the whole movie and through line one is kind of the, the the spiral of the band, <laughs> and then through <laughs> through line two is just kind of the the telling of the relationship between David and Nigel, which which is done yes. very very sweetly and very sincerely. It really is. It yeah. really is. Again, it's it's similar to that thing you do, which we uh, talked about before. Mm-hmm. Uh, it again, it does not have a complicated narrative arc or anything like that. Again, because it's it's done in the faux documentary style. So rock tip- documentary. Yeah, rockumentary. <laughs> my, my apologies. <laughs> So we, we open on a little intro from Marty DeBerge, just kind of saying what he's <laughs> intending to do. We're following around one of Britain's loudest bands, Sp- right. Spinal Tap, as, as they age into their career and they, they're touring America. And they're going to follow them around and just kind of document it. <laughs> we then cut to uh, the, be- the beginning of the tour. Uh, Spinal Tap is opening a show in New York and it is going very well. The crowd's yeah. into it. They're loving it. They're playing one of their hit songs tonight. I'm going to rock you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that song. I love all their music. Oh, I, you know, I, I love the music in this movie so much. I did not put it in my goods. I tend to lean that way as an easy, as an easy victory when yes. naming my, I'm like, nope, nope. It's too good. I, I can't just put it as a good because it's bigger than that. <laughs> but yeah, this gig is going well. Uh, the crowd's into it. We get a little quick intro. Uh, to all five members of the band, including the other two members who were just kind of there, Viv yeah. Savage, the keyboard player, and right, right. M- Mick Shripton, the 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 current the present drummer, <laughs> <laughs> the present drummer. Yes, he's he's present. We then cut to uh, an interview that Marty is doing with with the whole band, discussing the origins of the band. What better way to place uh, place to start than kind of telling the history? And uh, they're, David and Nigel are giving uh, the history of them in a band called the Thamesmen, which is kind of like like teeny bopper, kind of oh, like yeah. like proto like Brit like uh, like British yeah. invasion type yeah, music yeah, for sure. Yep, uh, Ed Begley Jr. is on the drums. In oh, this I little know. Sequence. He's <laughs> <laughs> These big old glasses on. Yeah, <laughs> a big dumb smile on his face. Yeah. We, we get some background on the drummers, the history of drummers in Spinal Tap, and there is quite a history. Apparently that uh, Spinal Tap has had over a dozen drummers throughout their history. Accident, a very accident-prone <laughs> position. And the reason why the drummers are uh, at a constant flux of rotation is not because of any lack of skill or commitment. It's because they keep dying. <laughs> yes it's a very accident prone position yeah yeah the drummers keep dying so uh so they kind of tell about the, the three of them nigel david and derek talk ab- about a few of the drummers they have including stubby pete you know <laughs> in fact i think ed begley jr was stubby pete yeah he was uh, stubby yeah, pete. he was stubby pete uh he died in a bizarre gardening accident and <laughs> right. and uh, the authority said that it's best left unsolved. <laughs> I know. I know. I just love that line. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's just better left unsolved. <laughs> By the way, as, as we start to get into some of the, some of the great lines in this movie, um, this is also uh, a very unscripted movie. Oh, uh, so tremendously unscripted. Just, just to give our audience uh, some insight on how the structure came together. Uh, it was largely unscripted, very uh, improvisational. You know, they would enter scenes with like, here's where you're going to begin and here's where we need you to end. But how we get there is up to you. <laughs> right. So, and if you know anything about these actors, 
I mean, Michael McKeon and Christopher Guest are, I mean, they've made a career out of very loosely scripted improvisational movies. Uh, Harry Shearer is also a very fine actor and a fine comedian, but his, his route of career is taking him down a slightly different path. He's not as prominent in these improvisational movies, but yeah, you know, you, if these two look familiar, it's because you've seen them in other, in other movies of the ilk. Yeah. They've all been there. Uh, they were all at, at different points in their careers, members of the Saturday Night Live cast, mm-hmm. Ga- Guest and Shearer in the early 80s, and Michael McKeon was there in the mid-90s. Um, yeah, th- they've been all over the place, uh, just immensely talented uh, actors. Uh, we, Christopher we, Guest married to Jamie Lee Curtis. Yes, Mr. Little Mr. Mr. Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. I almost yeah. threw that in during uh, during your character rundown. Yeah. Um, Going back to our, our seeds here, uh, we, we, we are told the tale of another drummer from Spinal Tap, uh, Stumpy Joe. Uh, he, he, he died uh, kind of a gruesome death. He choked on vomit. Uh, yeah, however, it was it, it was, it was, it was somebody, some, someone else's vomit. Someone else's vomit. They, and they, they can, don't know who. No, because you because <laughs> per the line, you can't you can't dust for vomit. <laughs> As um, story time, really quick, uh, several years ago, this is probably almost 20 years ago now, uh, my dad, my sister, and I took mm-hmm. a kind of a random trip to New York. We went to Cooperstown, to the Baseball Hall of Fame. I vaguely remember this trip. Yes, and we had a couple of days left before we had, we flew into Albany, drove over to Cooperstown, uh, and we had a couple of days left, and so we're like, yeah, let's just pick a town on the map, and we picked this town in western Massachusetts, um, it's a w- Williamstown and um, a home of Williams College, a uh, very pr- prestigious liberal arts uh, sc- private school here in America. And uh, we and ate at some little Thai restaurant of this cute town in downtown. And who was at the next table but Michael McKean? See, you never mm-hmm. told me that. You you knew 20 years ago we were going to have a podcast. Well, I hate to you, you know you keep it. things from you, but... Yeah, you knew uh, it was coming. So I should know awesome. better. This relationship is built on trust, Oz, and I've just yeah. Broke well, that trust. considering we've been friends for longer than that, and I didn't know this story until now. Yeah, but oh well, I know it now. You know so it now. I do. <laughs> take that off my advent calendar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eat so that did cho- you guys eat that chocolate? So did you? Did you speak to Michael McKeon? Oh or did no, you just kind of. Oh no, no. We didn't. We, we, we didn't want to. We didn't want to bother. We didn't want to be those people. Yeah. Yeah, and this was I can actually I can remember the year it was two it was I think it was two thousand four because March of the Penguins was in theaters. Mm, yeah, I usually I can you know it was it was yeah. That's my reference point, March of the Penguins. Mm-hmm. Some go B C <laughs> and A D, but you go B yeah. March of the Penguins. <laughs> yeah, B B P before Penguins right. and then A P yeah. after Penguins. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. That that's how I orient myself in history. Yeah, everything <laughs> everything on your calendar starts in 04. Yep, <laughs> and not even January first yep. of 04, but your trip to Cooperstown 04. <laughs> yep, the year of our Lord Emperor Penguin. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so uh, we're back uh, back to the movie here. Uh, we're at the uh, the the opening tour party in New York City, and who's there but? Bobby Fleckman, an artist <laughs> relation for Polymer Record, play by the nanny, Fran Drescher. Fran Drescher. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's there, uh, the president of Polymer Records, whose character name is Dennis Eaton Hogg, is there. <laughs> right. say Dennis Eaton Hogg. Dennis Eaton Hogg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a couple of mimes there, played by, uh, in cameo appearances by... By Billy Crystal and a very, very young Dana Carvey. Yeah, very young Dana Carvey. Yeah, <laughs> like this was pre this was pre Halloween two Dana Carvey. Mm, that says something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, this, every- is, this is pre Police Academy two Dana Carvey <laughs> or four. I don't know. He was in one of the Police Academy movies. Anyway, I know that. no, uh, wait, that's David Spade, not Dana Carvey. I apologize. Go ahead <laughs> to the career of Dana Carvey. Oops. <laughs> Uh, everyone is excited and optimistic about the tour. The record yeah. company's excited. The band is excited. Every, everybody's into it. They had a great show. Mm-hmm. Um, we cut to a gig in uh, in Philly. We we also along the way we we get introduced to their manager Ian Faith, 
who's you kind of get the the impression that he's been around for a while. He carries a cricket bat along with him. <laughs> I was gonna say carries a cricket bat. It comes in use. It does, like when he pins yeah, people gotta... up against the wall by the throat, <laughs> <laughs> or if you need to clear off a table real quick. <laughs> it's a lot of use out of that cricket bat. None of which involves playing cricket. <laughs> no, I do love that, that cutaway where he's got that guy like he's like pinned against the wall <laughs> by his throat. <laughs> Uh, the, I would say the the second best uses of of a cricket bat in film after Shaun of the Dead. Oh yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're in Philadelphia and they're at another gig and this is this one's also going pretty well. Uh, they're playing Big Bottom, uh, another one of their <laughs> their hit songs. Um, a couple of unique things that uh. I that I love about this song is that <laughs> typically in the band lineup, Derek is the bass player and yeah. Nigel is lead guitar and david is the rhythm guitarist the lead singer um so derek is playing a bass here he's playing a double necked bass a a double yeah yeah and uh, the other two nigel and david are also playing bass guitars so they're harmonizing (laughs) on three different bass guitars (laughs) on a song called big bottom and even and even the drummer and i honestly did not even notice this until this past viewing for me the drummer is is barely touching the snare he's hitting all the toms which have a uh-huh. lower a lower sound right so right. everything in the song is super <laughs> low <laughs> my favorite part of this song is just the references of you know um it was uh the the <laughs> The bigger the waistband, the deeper the quicksand, or so I have, or so I have read. Yeah, most of Spinal Tap's lyrics. Again, again, this is a PG podcast, yeah, folks. Yeah, uh, most of Spinal Tap's <laughs> lyrics are are pretty thick and sexual innuendo. <laughs> I just, I just love the, I just love the concept that in this, in this universe. That he read that somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> or, or so or, I have read. Or so I've read. <laughs> right. I wouldn't know, but it's yeah, there's I a lot of it. there's a lot of scholarly works out there about Big Bottom. <laughs> I read it somewhere. <laughs> uh, oh, D- Der- Derek is wearing a great like leather and rings kind of S and M outfit. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's oh it's great. <laughs> With this just massive high handlebar mustache. Yeah. Like. Oh yeah. It's he's got the yeah the, the handlebar kind of uh, Ambrose <laughs> Burnside kind of thing going. He gets excited later as he refers to the roadie as it's your first mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we cut back to uh, the band talking with Marty again about their albums and the album reviews. Apparently, they've been together for seven, 17 years and have released 15 albums. <laughs> Including Shark Sandwich. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll, we'll start with Shark Sandwich. Yeah. It's, the album cover is literally a sandwich <laughs> with a shark fin coming out of the top. <laughs> and and, and, and uh, Marty is talking about the reviews. And apparently Spinal Tap is not very well loved. They're not beloved no. in the criti- critical community. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. There was a two-word review for Shark Sandwich, and it was <laughs> S-word sandwich. Right. <laughs> right. Crap sandwich. <laughs> yes. Uh, a couple other albums that they they talk about here include Intravenous de Milo. The album cover is is the Venus de Milo I, I, with, 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 with an IV with an IV bag. <laughs> <laughs> And then, uh, <laughs> and, and, and Marty reads off the review, says, like, what a reviewer says is they're treading water in a sea of a, an inappropriate word, sexuality, and bad poetry. To, to, <laughs> to which I think it's David responds, that's nitpicking, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. It's nitpicking. It's nitpicking. Uh, then we also have uh, The Gospel According to Spital Tap, which is a very 70s prog rock kind of like uh yeah has like religious undertones and oh, the yeah. re- and the reviewer like, said <laughs> go ahead i was just like you know the album cover is like full of stained glass windows yes and, yeah like, exactly it's, it's very like old english cathedral <laughs> and the reviewer that they mentioned here says that uh what what day did the lord create spinal tap and couldn't he have rested that day too <laughs> so the, so, so that nobody likes them critically no <laughs> so it basically just shows the band reacting to these these awful <laughs> reviews that they've received. You know, some years. of them like they they admit they've never they hadn't read that one before. Yeah, like, well, well, that, were... but I have a feeling in the performances that that like um, Rob Reiner and maybe some other behind the scenes right. people came up with these reviews. Oh, and, yeah. and then they, they just, just re- reacted yeah, to them. Probably the just fl- flinging them at them. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> just, oh. 
Uh, we're, nec- uh, we're next. We're moving right along through the eastern part of the United States. We're at a, a recording industry event in Atlanta, and they're talking about their new album, Oz, and, and they're having some tr- some struggles with promotion. Ian says yeah. that the, the Boston gig got canceled, uh, and, and Bobby Fleckman is there oh, yeah. again. Uh, and by the way, they all have cold sores at this no. point. <laughs> <laughs> Big old herpy cold, yeah, sores, cold sores going on. They all do. No one mentions them. They just have them. Yeah, <laughs> which it, there is a, a deleted scene for Spinal Tap in which they they basically all slept with the same woman. Oh, <laughs> and, so, that's, and so that's how to they be got, assumed anyway <laughs> but but i think it's funnier in the context where it's they're just there and for yeah some reason i do they, i they agree, they I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so they're talking about the the new album and how, why why are we having str- so much trouble getting it distributed and it turns out that the record label won't put it out because right. of the proposed album cover <laughs> and, right. and oz <laughs> yeah what um <laughs> i'll put you on the spot here that's um, fine what what are some of the things that were proposed to be on the album cover? Well, uh, the album is called "Smell the Glove," um, yes. <laughs> and and what was being rejected was a basically a woman on all fours with a chain leash around her neck <laughs> um, as they are they are putting a glove in front of her face so they could smell the glove, and it wasn't originally a glove. No, no. <laughs> you should have heard what they wanted to put <laughs> <laughs> right and so uh you know the boys don't see a problem with this because no it's, i don't understand <laughs> yeah yeah and the eaton hog apparently calls and says we can't run it because it's sexist to which right. Ni- nigel responds <laughs> what, what's wrong with being sexy <laughs> it's, it's like what's, what's sex- the matter it, sexist <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> in a, in oh, a very, I, love, I just, oh yeah, in a very da- improv. dated reference, Bobby says that Sears and Kmart are refusing to sell the album. <laughs> right? Yeah, Sears and Kmart, yeah. where everyone goes from your their that, music. That's, that's where I shop for my cassette tapes. Uh, Bobby suggests a new cover, and that's mm-hmm. kind of where that where that ends. There, uh, we kind of keep intercutting back and forth between like either concerts or or, rec- or record label events, and then interviews with Marty and the band. Um, and Marty starts talking with Nigel and David and we start to get a little bit of history about them and the friendship and relationship between mm-hmm. Marty or sorry, between Nigel and David. They met when they were eight and seven mm-hmm. and they, there's a, a sweet little scene where they, they sing together like the first song they ever wrote. They're in like a little diner yeah. someplace. Oh yeah, it was, it was cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they're more than brothers because, yes. you know, brothers fight and we don't fight. Yeah. You know, we're, we just love each other. We get along. Yeah, there, there's yeah, this it was gen- a cute. Yeah, yeah. There's just a genuine, sincere bond between the, these two, and and it's very apparent early, and they do a great job of establishing that early in the film. Mm-hmm. They really do, mm-hmm. because above all else, I mean, it's fair to say that, you know, everybody in this movie is is a very capable actor on top of just mm-hmm. being funny, um, and so that's you know they they have the ability to pull these scenes together because they're they're good actors too Mm -hmm. um it's not just comedy 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 they can they can hit those tones that they need to hit to to really make a scene like this Mm -hmm. have some gravity to it uh the sequence ends with a little foreshadowing for a moment later on in the film where they're talking about how how (laughs) men or actually boys are attracted to their music but women are fearful of it uh, and N- Nigel and David speculate it's because of the armadillos in their trousers. So exactly. a little foreshadowing yeah. for a very famous scene <laughs> yes, a little later in the famous. film. Uh, we're, we're next. We're at a gig in North Carolina pre-show, and the band is having more problems, Oz. Um, yes. First of all, Nigel is just having a hard time with the dinner that was provided there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a little, there's a deli tray. <laughs> That is provided right. to the band backstage, and it has like the little tiny pieces of bread. Yeah, and... a little like Melba toast, and you know, uh-huh. just real small pieces, like you said, pieces <laughs> of bread and and meat that is larger than the bread. <laughs> you know, you're looking at you know, you've got a a round of salami. Yes. That in common sense you would fold up and put on the bread and eat as a snack. <laughs> but mm-hmm. Poor Nigel. Poor Nigel's he not just, trying to make a sandwich. He can't, he can't figure it out. And Ian comes over. It's like, well, you fold the meat. 
Well, but the bread just keeps breaking. (laughs) (laughs) He can't figure it out. He just keeps snapping the bread in half because he's trying to fold it over. (laughs) (laughs) It's just so dumb, but it's so it works so well. Oh my goodness. Uh, We're on stage. The band is playing another one of their hits called Hell Hole. Uh, I, I was t- tell me if you agree with there's something I don't know like hilarious about the keyboard player Viv like he has he only oh, has a absolutely. couple lines in the whole movie but like yeah. there's there's a couple shots of Viv in the sequence that I just he's, he's I yeah I, I agree like he's he's just fun to look at yeah because the rest of these guys look like rock stars um, you know period wise even they're they've got the big teased out hair they've got the tight clothes they've you know, they just, they look like rock stars. And then there's Viv. Mm-hmm. Who's... <laughs> he's kind of trollish. Yeah, he's very trollish. And it's and the just the facial expressions he makes when he's playing, like, mm-hmm. he's in his world at oh, the yeah. keyboard. He's a great keyboardist. He's really yeah, into he's, it. He is within his realm and the hats is at his happiest. But yeah, absolutely. He's just fun to watch because, like you said, I think trollish is a perfect term yeah. for it. <laughs> uh, the, at one point, the camera, uh, we see Derek, and it's kind of a shot of him kind of like like um, abdomen down. And <laughs> you see something kind of artificial in, yeah. in his pant leg, we'll say. Yes, very pipish. <laughs> yes, <laughs> a cylindrical shape. <laughs> right, perfectly cylindrical shape. But yeah, yes. it's... Uh, but but again, it's it's the armadillo that scares the women away. Uh huh. But but that sequence, it was David and Nigel talking about armadillos, not not Derek. Right. So right. right. Uh, there's also a fun little bit here where N- Nigel's doing this like guitar solo, and he kind of falls over onto his back, but he keeps oh, playing. He can't get back up. But he can't get back up, and he refuses to stop playing. So right, the ro- not... roadie comes out, <laughs> he has to pick and him up, lift him up as he yeah. just keeps playing. I, I love I love those because you know, they do they do throw those like comedic stage performances in with you know so it's not like every time they're on stage something funny happens yeah but they they throw enough of them in there that it does it's not just musical performance and then you know documentary bit yeah uh, i feel like the breaks it up the guy who played that that roadie that stage hand deserved a a screen credit because you you see him at various points running out to try to fix something or right oh yeah and he he reminds me even though he's dressed in all orange instead of all red but he remind me of like the danny noonan character on caddyshack yeah just like you know hat matches the shirt and big like froey hair popping up from underneath (laughs) but he is he's always coming out to save the day somehow Uh, the next the next piece we have here is one of the famous little sequences in this movie where it's Marty and Nigel at uh, at Nigel's place I'm assuming and Nigel is showing Marty his guitar collection right and some of his gear <laughs> and specifically some of his amps <laughs> right because yeah don't you... even point at some of those guitars no this no no still don't, got don't, the ta- this don't even still got the tag on it <laughs> you could hear it it just it holds the guitar up well, you would hear it if it was playing <laughs> Uh, it is, and, it, and then the scene starts to wrap up. They go over to the amps because sometimes, Oz, when you're playing, you just need to go one louder. <laughs> yeah, ten's <laughs> so, not loud enough. No. So Nigel had his amp specifically made to go to 11. eleven. This one goes to eleven because eleven, Oz, is one louder. <laughs> one louder than ten. <laughs> it's to which louder. Marty asks, like, well, why don't they just make ten louder? <laughs> like, to which well, Nigel could... pauses for a moment. <laughs> But this goes to eleven. <laughs> this one goes to eleven. <laughs> just, just, just completely <laughs> over his head. Just right. does, does not get it. It just this. It goes to eleven. It's clearly louder. Yeah, it's louder. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, uh, we're we're at a hotel in Memphis, and things just are not working. No, no. We're we're spiraling at this point. The hotel has messed up the reservations. Another rock star, played by Howard Hessman of WKRP in Cincinnati fame. Stop! It just ha- happens to go through in the hotel there, um, and the, the, and he's you know his his status is is established in the rock world while Spinal Tap is kind of spiraling, and it, it's a little yeah. moment in the film where it kind of re- it gives some relativity to just kind of how far they're falling and how fast right. they're falling. Well, compared especially to this other he's, guy. yeah, he's coming up behind him, and there's a couple you know a couple of young women that mm-hmm. kind of start cheering and wave, and even Nigel's like, "Here we go!" Like. Yep. And then, but they're of course waving at him, and so they uh, they get passed up, and 
you know and, and it turns out that this guy also has a very provocative album cover but he's the subject of the album yeah. cover which is why <laughs> he's because the, it's him he's and, the victim yeah he's the victim <laughs> he's the victim <laughs> And you even see, you know, Ian's got a relationship with their manager, you know, so you could tell that this is definitely two trajectories that are not headed the same direction. <laughs> There's another great line here uh, following that that uh, conversation about why this guy is able to get away with this cover. Yeah. And it goes back to, to David and he says, There's such a fine line between stupid and clever. <laughs> <laughs> and Nigel doesn't know where that line is either. No, no. Uh, the Memphis gig is canceled too, Oz. So yeah. there's, there's that. Um, we go back to an interview with Marty, and he's uh, talking with Ian. Uh, and Marty's like, "Well, your last tour, Spinal Tap was playing the or was playing uh, like arenas, fifteen thousand yeah. seat arenas, and now you're doing fifteen hundred seat theaters. So what's going on?" And <laughs> Ian kind of kind of plays it off. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. It's it's just. Uh, it's, it, they're still popular. It's just a more, what do you say, a more selective audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wordsmiths his way out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, they're still just as popular as they were. It's yeah. just the audience is more selective. Selective, yeah. <laughs> so at this point, we get introduced over the phone, you don't see her yet, to another character, Janine, yeah. who is David's fiance. Yeah. David's complaining that the Memphis gig was canceled, some of the other Midwest gigs were canceled. And Janine tells David that she's going to join him. She's going to join mm -hmm. him on the road. Uh, and we get a little cut to Nigel, who overhears the conversation. And right. Disappointment. Yeah. He's he's not enthusiastic. There's there's a kind of a look of disdain on his face. Yeah. Um, there's um, they're listening to the radio and they hear an old song by the by the Thamesmen. So when their first phase yeah, they, come they, on, yeah, yeah, they call, call them in. Like, oh, you guys got to get in here. Yeah, they're <laughs> playing so one they of all, your old one of your old songs. They all crowd around the radio and sit on the floor like they're just loving it. <laughs> and then it's all spoiled. Yep. The DJ says, "Oh, the band changed the name to Spinal Tap, who are currently residing in the Where Are They Now file." <laughs> and then the camera just lingers on their faces yep. as they let that soak in. To... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, we I, was, get an, I was half expecting Nigel to be like, but we're right here. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're here. We're literally here. That's what, where we are. What do you mean? <laughs> I know where we are. We get uh, we go back to uh, some of the more interviews with Marty and the band, and they're mm -hmm. talking about um, touring the world and elsewhere and everything that they've, right. they've done it, before. Yeah. Even that, like, Derek throws that. Derek's not even on camera when he says that yeah. line. Like, it's just... Just the improv of this movie, just throwaway lines that if you're, you're not going to catch them on your first viewing. If you're watching it a, a second or third or how many ever times, like you're going to pick up something different just because there's so much packed in here yeah. that is just throwaway. Like, you know, as you, you as a former improv actor, no, you, you can't stop to acknowledge because then you break yeah. the flow. Yeah, you have to live within the scene and within the rules you've established in the scene. Yeah, and so for these, they just they just keep going because mm -hmm. Derek's not even on camera. Yeah, <laughs> so, you know, he's the bass player. We see another previous iteration of Spinal Tap playing a song called "Listen to the Flower People." <laughs> <laughs> this song's been stuck in my head for two days. Oh, it, it's listen <laughs> to what the flower, the flower people <laughs> say. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> listen. Shh. <laughs> That's my favorite part of the song is when Derek Derek just goes shh. <laughs> A very like late sixties psychedelic, like like yeah. you know the San Francisco psychedelic. It's just hilarious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they talk about uh, another one of the drummers that they've lost along the way. Uh, Peter <laughs> Peter James Bond, who exploded on sta on stage at the Isle at the Isle of Lucy Jazz Festival. <laughs> I just love his fact that his name's like Peter James Bond. Yeah, <laughs> like, and like, when he exploded, there was a little green globule just left on his seat. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that and, and somebody but, goes go ahead. No, it's like it's people spontaneous, like spontaneously yep. bus. Dozens a year. Yeah, it's just not widely reported. <laughs> right. uh, so they're they're at the next gig in Milwaukee and they're sound checking. 
Uh, and they're they're playing a little one of their older numbers, kind of kept reconnecting and starting mm -hmm. to enjoy themselves again. And who walks in, Oz? Who shows up for the first time on camera? Janine surprises them in Milwaukee. Yep. Because they, I mean, they're they're in their element that like she's back by the sound guy, like mm -hmm. you know. So she came in, sat down, like they didn't even register she was there. And of course, it just it interrupts everything. You know, yep. David jumps off the stage. He runs and gives her. You know, like hey, Janine's here. And uh, we cut to Ni Nigel. To Nigel. Nigel's not excited. Yep, he's got a very kind of cold reaction. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to Janine arriving, something else arrives. The new album. The new album is there. Obviously, <laughs> they, they brought right. a shipment there. Yeah, and yeah. Smell the glove has been printed. Mm -hmm. And the album cover is black. It's yeah. just it's jet black. It's it's as black as it could get. Could it get any darker? Well, how yeah. much darker? How much darker could this album cover get, Curtis? The answer is none. None more black. <laughs> <laughs> David doesn't like it, Oz. David no. is furious about it. Yeah. Nigel kind Which of thinks is, it's okay. Yeah. Derek kind of gets lost in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so reflective. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, and it's it's just funny though because even. Um, you know, Fran Drescher's character mentions earlier, you know, that like, look at the Beatles. They had the White Album. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, this is kind of a play. And of course, in real life, like Metallica came out with an album that was all black cover, except yeah. for their little logo. Yeah. You could barely make out on the cover. And it's, and it's sold, it, I, you know, it's sold millions. So, yeah, it's in this world. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Just another, another division between David and Nigel. Ian gives kind of a prescient line as this little scene closes. He says, I frankly think this is the turning point. Well, <laughs> cuts, cuts that, to the... That was yep. early, uh, this, That was early <laughs> Spinal Tap. This is middle Spinal Tap. This is middle Spinal Tap. <laughs> middle do it. <laughs> the wrong drummer died. <laughs> <laughs> Literally a <Yeah>. dozen times. <laughs> so uh, they're playing the gig that night in uh, Milwaukee. They're playing a song called Rock and Roll Salvation. And there's another famous scene, the Cocoon Bit. Oh, I where, love where, the where bit. all three band members emerge from the these like human sized vertical cocoons right. on stage, <laughs> <laughs> and they're playing. And of course, poor Derek. Two, yeah, two of them emerge. From yeah, the two cocoon. of them move. <laughs> Derek, the bass player, is stuck at his because all of the like the, the sight gags always happen to Derek. <laughs> yeah, they all, <laughs> right. Minus my just minus Nigel on the ground. Yes, minus, minus a that, couple yeah. Nigel things. So they, but I love I love it because this scene they 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 play the entire song mm -hmm. like they play it out from start to finish um, just so that we could see Derek struggle the entire song <laughs> trying to get out of the cocoon. <laughs> you 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 see it here the the stage hand banging on it with a hammer. He comes out with a blowtorch. Blowtorch. <laughs> at one point, even at one point, Derek's got his arm outside of the cocoon trying to open yeah. it that way. You know, meanwhile, he's trying to continue playing. Yeah, he's in still the playing the whole time. He's a trooper. Right. He powers through. And, and so and we, yeah, we finish it. Ahead. Finish it off, eyes. I say we, we see David and Nigel. Re songs wind, winding up they retreat back to their cocoons which close on them just as Derek's opens so he, he's like it's almost like if you're not paying attention Derek he then steps off the steps you know up to the microphone and looks around and realizes he's the only one out there so he goes to retreat the cocoon and slams <laughs> shut and he, now he can't get back in <laughs> but his arm is trapped in there he gets his arm in and then he turns and like give it a fuck. and then he turns back to the crowd he's and he, he starts yeah just pumping to the crowd oh it's great it's such it's just such simple comedy but yeah it's it, so it funny. works it works so well well it, i mean it's i mean it's just this this bit here is just like such three stooges ask like yeah just just you prat, know prat folly yeah, physical yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> but they just they sell it so well. It's so funny. So we're on the tour bus. David is clearly whipped by Janine Oz. It's just oh, it's it's it's, it's, it's pretty yeah, it's sad. Gross. It's pretty yeah. sad. Um, and Dave, she knows it. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, David at one point, I think it was during an interview, says he's telling Marty like Nigel and Janine they're just they're so similar, but they just don't communicate. So yeah. he's he's I think kind of got his gl rose colored glasses on, trying to see a connection between yeah. Nigel and Janine that clearly isn't right. there. Well, uh, we we get a scene on the bus too where uh, you know Derek and Nigel are in the back with all the with all the roadie or all the groupies having and fun. Having a good old, and yep. they they got the they got the new video game like they're playing Missile Command on Atari, yep. 
And he's at the front of the bus with Janine, and he so badly wants to go back with the boys. And, you know, and he's just like, but they've got the new game. And she just basically shuts it down. No, no, no I'm, you're not I'm going back now. there where you're working yeah, on your, your astrology yeah. with me. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's what I knew. I couldn't remember what they were talking about, but yeah, because, you know, we're talking about our zodiac sign. Yeah, everything and... with her is astrology and zodiac. <laughs> everything is zodiac. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we Including get another... the masks that she wants them to wear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we get another another cute little scene with um, Marty and, and Nigel. And Nigel's playing a song on the piano. And it's a really <laughs> pretty song. It really is. Yeah. It's, it, it is. It is. It's mm-hmm. it's it is. It's a very pretty song. Yeah. And, and it, it's the, the cutaway back to him. It's, it's a very kind of tender moment that comes after this tension between David and Janine. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, <laughs> the super pretty song that he's playing for for Barty well, is it's, called. Yeah, it's it's part. Well, it's part of a musical trilogy, really. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> he's influenced by by Mozart and Bach, which he so, so it's like a mock piece. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of a musical trilogy, and, mm-hmm. and 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 Marty is just like this is. It's so pretty. It's beautiful. You know what, what's it called? <laughs> Lick my love pump. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's, it's called. Just like, it's just chewing his gum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this, this beautiful, pretty song, and that's what it's right. called. Um, and <laughs> next, next up, as uh, we get uh, another famous scene here, we get the airport bit oh. with Derek, <laughs> where the through line of the armadillos and the yeah. big cylinder in Derek's pants. Oz, why don't yeah. you why don't you talk us through <laughs> what happens here? So it, they they're heading through security, and as you pass through security at an airport, you have to go through a metal detector. So Derek walks through. As normal, sets off the alarm. So they have him go, you know, they they have him take his jacket off and empty his pockets and everything that you would normally uh, respond to. Well, he just keeps setting off the the detectors. So they have him step aside and they take a wand. And, uh, you know, do you, do you, <laughs> he, or he goes, uh, they ask him if he has any artificial limbs or, or implants. No, not, goes, not, not really. <laughs> <laughs> not really. <laughs> It's like you do or you don't, but but uh, so they're you know they're wanding him while they get over by his by his crotchal region and uh, <laughs> it sets off the alarm and it's and they're like going from a like knee to his knee to his belly button and it just keeps <laughs> <setting> off. <laughs> and of course and and Dave and the rest of the band who has yet to pass through the metal detector they're already laughing oh yeah because they know. And so he he just kind of <laughs> side eyes the camera as he pulls as he pulls a zucchini wrapped aluminum foil out of his pants <laughs> and then just sets it down and just walks off just like, thud just sets it on the table <laughs> and they I mean they just lose it they, oh yeah and, <laughs> and kudos to those like uh, you know TSA employee yeah, yeah. actresses that are keeping a straight face through all of this. Because, it, you know, as improv as it is, it wouldn't surprise me at all if the actors playing the other bandmates are legitimately laughing in this yeah. scene because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> I just love the side eye Derek gives to the camera. It's yeah. just oh, yeah, humiliation. It's just absolute humiliation. <laughs> uh, moving forward, just things are coming apart even more. Um, a gig at a ho- at a Holiday Inn says, Welcome National Company of the Wiz and Spinal Tap. Um, <laughs> and, and Spinal Tap. I, some record promo falls through. Uh, <laughs> they're at, uh, they end up, the next gig is a, is a, is at Cleveland at the Xanadu Theater. And another famous bit happens here as the, the band is coming out of the dressing room and going towards the stage. <laughs> they, get, they get lost. <laughs> they get lost. They get lost backstage. <laughs> They're all excited. The drummer's kind of banging his, his drumsticks on the wall. Derek's yelling, hello, Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> they run they into the, s- the same maintenance tech twice. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> they can't find their way on stage. And we never know if they do. No, they, no, you don't I know if they, they actually they just make cut it. A- they cut away from Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, yep, they do. <laughs> I remember uh, back in the, the late 90s when I was a big professional wrestling fan, Chris Jericho, mm-hmm. who's one of my favorite all-time wrestlers, just yeah. because he, he gets it and he's, you know, he's yes. great on the microphone. He did a bit early in his career when he was still with WCW where he got lost backstage it was, oh, really? it was a complete spinal tap send up oh, and, and, nice. he ended up, and he ended up accidentally locking himself out of the arena <laughs> <laughs> and you know jericho probably is a big spinal tap fan oh yeah so is yeah oh yeah i could definitely see that yeah definitely see that <laughs> uh they end up at a diner and they're expressing their frustrations janine says that uh you know it's 
The album's mixed wrong. Nigel and Ian are like, no. Um, yeah. David proposes using Janine's costume ideas because they, they got to inject some life into, into the band here. Right. Uh, Nigel looks incredibly annoyed the whole time. Oh, yeah. He's checked out. Yeah. 100%. Uh, she proposes costumes based on their astrological signs. <laughs> Just masks. David, of course, would look like a lion. She hands yeah. a she hands a picture to Derek here, which is of a crab. She goes, Here, "Here's your <laughs> here's your crab face." <laughs> <laughs> Ian says they can't dress like animals. It's going to cost too much. And so Nigel proposes that they use a set piece and set design that's worked for them before. Let's let's go back to the well. Let's use something that yeah. worked. That's worked. Let's use our Stonehenge set. Well, you know, they're also teasing her at this point because she was saying it wasn't mixed well. It wasn't it wasn't mixed in Dublin? Yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, and so they're ripping on her because she meant to say Dolby. And of course, I just love it because, yeah. um, you know, when they're passing around these these costume ideas, and he's like. Whoa. Well, maybe if it was mixed in Dublin, <laughs> David just gets so mad. Oh, yeah, but he yeah, gets so really let's, defensive, we, yeah. Let's go back to, like you said, let's go back to Stonehenge. Yep. That worked for us, let's do it. And he draws out the sketch right there on a napkin. On uh, a napkin. Need. And he writes 18 inches. Quotation marks. Yes. Not single quotation, yep. double quotation. So it's a, inches, 18 inches. <laughs> but again, it's a sketch. Like, it's yeah, common sense. You know, he can't draw it, you know, life size, you know actual size on a napkin so yeah but yeah he gives the measurements for it mm -hmm. and gives it to ian who you know he does what he's told as yeah. a manager we we get a fun little little cutaway for a moment to um marty talking to nigel about you know how do you keep up david's the songwriter you know what's your main contribution he said like my solos and it cuts to a couple oh, clips love, of, love of, of Nigel doing his guitar <laughs> solos. There's one, he's playing his guitar, and then he starts strumming another guitar with his foot. <laughs> I love when he's playing the guitar, and then he takes the violin, and he's yeah. strumming the guitar with his foot. But then he stops he to tune. He stops to tune the, to the violin. <laughs> the violin's out of tune. <laughs> And he, and he keeps playing. He's got like, you know, and I, I love it whenever Nigel's play because he has like the glittery like eyeshadow on. Oh, yeah. And, and he's always like just sticking his tongue out everywhere. No, just kind just, of like, it's just, just like his lips preening. are rippling. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Christopher Guest is just amazing as, as a performer, as a literal performer <laughs> in this movie. Yeah. And then as we get Stonehenge. <laughs> well, we get a scene where... Ian meets with uh, the yes, Stonehenge yes. creator, you know, and she's got the she's got the Stonehenge statue on the table, and he's mm -hmm. like, "Oh, this looks amazing. This is great. You know, I can't wait to see it life size." She's like, "What do you mean life size? Like, this is what you gave me. I made yeah. it off what you gave me. Off the so napkin. she so she made an eighteen inch model of a Stonehenge monument. Mm. It really just looks like the pie symbol, but whatever." Yeah. Um, you know, so this is this is what they're gonna play at the show. Well, of course, Ian apparently didn't tell the band. So as they're rocking out to Stonehenge, you know, the <laughs> down from above comes, you know, comes Stonehenge. Well, the camera angles and whatnot make it look like it yeah. Initially, might, the the perspective, yeah, the perspective looks like they got it right until they cut back and you see this 18, <laughs> 18 inch <laughs> tall Stonehenge model just just sit on the floor <laughs> like it's it's just sitting there um and then because <laughs> of the dru the druids yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so they get to you know they get to the bit of the song where the where the little people come out yeah. and and dance and, around and stone dan dance around <laughs> stonehenge which which would have worked you know it worked last time because stonehenge was much larger but was here, 18 feet tall <laughs> right right but in this case the uh you know, as they say, you know that the that it's it's dwarfed by the dwarfs. Yes. Like uh, you know, these little people tower over this model, and uh, yeah. So back and, it, it, and that was the last. Oh, that was, yeah, that was the last draw. Backstage, draw. David is furious. He blames he blames Ian, mm -hmm. and Ian's like, "Well, it was Nigel's drawing," and David's like, "Well, it's your job to make up for." Or it's it's he blames Ian for Nigel being confused, and he's like, "It's not my fault. I just did what you asked." Right, and Janine's uh, all over him too. <laughs> Derek suggests fixing the choreography. You know, just keep the dwarf clear. <laughs> right, <laughs> so she doesn't knock it over. Yeah, they're completely <laughs> missing the point. 
and it's and like here we think we think Nigel's the one that like doesn't have a clue because yes. he does it, but then there's Derek, <laughs> yeah. really, really isn't even on the, in well, the he's, same. He's, book, he's trying to play peace. He's trying to play peacekeeper. Yeah, he he's trying to he come is. up with he a creative, is. calm solution, and it just does just doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> just doesn't work. Yeah, because I mean the band is literally like on its last leg. They're yeah. fighting. Yeah, you know Ian. You know, David has the idea that he and Janine can co-manage. Mm-hmm. And, and Ian re- flatly refuses. I am not co-managing with a woman. No, no. I'm not doing it. No. And um, he quits. He quits. He's he out. Quit. He quits. He's done. Mm-hmm. He just he takes his, his uh, cricket paddle and out he goes. Yep. And, of course, Derek asks the most pressing question. Um, are we, are we going to do Stonehenge again? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to do Stonehenge. <laughs> are we going to do it tomorrow? <laughs> So, so now, uh, yeah, yeah. Janine's so now, the manager. Janine's the manager, and they're on their way to the next gig, just moving right along as we kind of build up to the climax of the movie here. And uh, the their scheduled gig fell through, and it turns out they're on their way to play a gig at a military base. And, yeah. and who <laughs> greets them but Fred Willard. Fred Willard. Fred Willard. King, king of improv, Fred yeah. Willard. Comes out. <laughs> he, he asks if they've met a group called Four Jackson and Jill. They play they play out of a Ramada Inn at Kansas City. You probably know him because you travel in the same circles. <laughs> he says, I don't think your hair your hairs wouldn't pass military. <laughs> but you know, they and he makes a joke about, well, my hair is getting a little shaggy too. I hope they don't confuse me as a member of the band. <laughs> and, and then he asks, he gives them thirty minutes to set up. <laughs> right, and, it, yeah. and it does it in military time and they're right. all like like is that <laughs> and then he asks you know can you play a couple of slow numbers so i can dance too and it smash cut to them in the middle of sex farm, sex farm. <laughs> a song called sex farm <laughs> which is extremely loud and of course extremely vulgar yes <laughs> uh and they during the show uh nigel's Nigel's guitar picks up like a communication from like a military tower yeah, or something. Yeah, he's because he's gone wi- he's gone wireless. Yeah, uh, and yeah, <laughs> so that's yeah, it's reading like air traffic controller yeah. <laughs> is is communication running through his his speaker. And Ni- Nigel quits right there too. He throws yeah, his guitar sl- down. Yeah, slams it down and off he yeah. goes. He's he, done. He stares Janine down as he leaves, and yeah. And just things keep unraveling. A uh, little moment with David. He says, in six months, we'll forget about Nigel. I won't work with him again. And Marty's like, I can't right. believe this. You guys you, you yeah. said you're brothers. Um, they try a jazz exploration, the remaining members. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. And they actually, like, here, they do the, is this where they're they're at, like, the, the amusement park? Like, yeah. The, after the, the, the puppet show the sign up front says puppet show and spinal tap and janine's like i told them to put us before the puppet show right like she was okay with it but yeah but they actually have people there they're going to listen to them spinal tap fans mm-hmm. and uh they're doing their jazz exploration which yeah. just angers the remaining fans that they have mm-hmm. Uh, we we move on to uh, the end of tour rap party in L.A., which is very sparsely attended and just yeah. does not nearly you know doesn't have the life that that opening scene had. You know the New York the 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 party that was kicking off the show. Uh, David and Derek talk about doing side projects such as uh, the a musical based on Jack the Ripper. <laughs> What's it called? Was it Saucy Jack? <laughs> Saucy Jack. <laughs> And they're both just so like this, so freeing. Like yes. they just feel like we finally can let go, and or at least that's what they're telling themselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what they're telling each other. Like, yeah, yeah, this feels great. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is wonderful. And uh, they cuts to them prepping for their for their last show of the tour. And mm-hmm. who walks in? Nigel. Nigel walks in. Nigel. And, and he has a message from Ian. Sex Farm is on the charts in Japan. Yeah, and, it's number five. Yeah, Ian. Ian will jump back in if they want to tour Japan and. Yeah, David kind of kind of he tries to act tough. He tries to blow it off, but he's clearly very torn. Mm-hmm. Um, cuts to them, uh, or actually, uh, little, there's another little moment. Nigel wishes David a good show. Have a good yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. A, a little sweet moment. Um, and then they're on stage and they're playing the song that they opened the movie with. They're playing tonight. I'm gonna rock you tonight, without Nigel. All right, Nigel's on one backstage on one side. Yeah, he's just and off stage. Janine's Janine's backstage on the other side. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and David gives you know they're hitting they're hitting the part where the guitar solo should be. Yes, uh, and you know 
David just kind of looks over at Nigel and kind of, come on out. Yeah. Because I mean, they've apparently got a guitar sitting there waiting for him. And so Nigel comes out and plays to uh, much to the crowd's pleasure. They go nuts. Oh yeah. They go nuts. They they play. Uh, the drummer Mick explodes. <laughs> yeah, he, does just... he explodes and is immediately replaced. No, they don't literally. They don't miss a beat. He's immediately replaced by Joe Mama Besser. Another drummer just jumps in. <laughs> And as they, they play the song, uh, again, uh, we, we cut to Japan, so the song keeps yeah. going, and they're now playing a, a, an incredibly successful gig in Japan. Ian mm-hmm. is standing off backstage. He's kind of patting his cricket bat in his hand yeah. while Janine just, tow- just, yeah. just towering over, over Janine. Over Janine, yeah. And then the credits roll. That's it. That's it. That's This is Spinal Tap, 1984's yeah. This is Spinal Tap. So at this point in the show, Oz and I, uh, we give our own unique rating to the film we've been talking about. Oz, how would you rate This Is Spinal Tap? Oh, well, there's an obvious number to give it, but I'm not going to give it that number. Uh, Let's see. I would give this uh, nine gloves to smell. (laughs) Nine? Nine nine smelly gloves. Nine smelly gloves. I'm going to go with uh, 11 exploding drummers. Yeah, I figured 11 was the obvious <laughs> yes. number. I'm like, ah, I'm going to skip it. I've stolen enough from you this show. Yep, 11 exploding drummers as opposed to 11 drummers drumming. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and then we wrap the show up with the 3, 2, 1, folks. This is where Oz and I each share three goods, two bads, and one, huh, from the movie. In the movie in question this week, this is Spinal Tap. Oz, what are your three goods? Three goods. Um, I know I speak for both of us here uh, because we have watched a lot of this this style of improvisational movie. But I love quality improv. Mm-hmm. It's just so much fun to watch when you know they are just making it up on the spot. It's such a it's such a credit to the performers um, to not only run with it but also to be internalizing their character enough to 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 keep a straight face i mean you see all kinds of behind the scenes bloopers for friends in the office and you know where they just crack non-stop but there's a certain level of performance uh, that this movie has and some of the best in saturday night live are that way as well mm-hmm. where they're they just they can hold it together to get through the bit um and so that's my first good it's just the improvisation in this movie um by everybody is just top notch uh you know fred willard is an absolute scene stealer in the one (laughs) scene he's in um and so that's my first one it's just the the quality of the improv two uh nigel's faces when he's playing guitar um i have that i have that as one of my potential goods also uh just the faces he i mean he's just snarling and I mean, just the facial contortion of his mouth that he could do, you know, it just it, it just cracks me up, especially in the bit where they're showing, you know, his guitar solos. He's yeah. just, I mean, he gets his lips to curl in ways that just, <laughs> it's just like, there, it's like, it was just like rubber. Um, and so that's my second one. Oh, my yeah. third, Christopher Guest is just amazing in oh, this yeah. movie. It's just, he's so good. And then my third good is... Um, <laughs> just the variety of shirts the, bands wear, yep. the band wears throughout the film. Uh, most of them are the are cutoffs, but um, I just I just love a retro shirt, uh, and the the shirts in here crack me up. Mm-hmm. I love the shirts in Step Brothers for the same reason, you know, like <laughs> like the red Kawasaki shirt. That, yeah, uh, you know, uh, I just I just love that kind of throwaway shirt of that era, um, and so I really enjoyed looking at the variety of shirts yeah, particularly or, nigel's nigel's gumby shirts yeah his gumby <laughs> shirts as well as like the cut off with the glow in the dark skeleton yeah uh you know just but yeah just that that kind of stuff it's just goofy but um it's just fun to watch yeah. so those are my three goods how about you my three goods i'm gonna start just with stonehenge you know i, th- I think one of us for the for this whole month you know movies about music one of us our goods have always been the music i'm gonna go more specific mm-hmm. this week the music overall is, um, is great oh yeah. but i yeah. love stonehenge like St- I, I stonehenge is a legitimately fun song oh like, yeah it's a good song and, and it i'd say it it really like it's a fun rock song too it's got some really mm-hmm. really like fun like guitar riffs in it and and the back and forth vocals between david and nigel are great 
Yeah, Christopher Guest has has kind of a kind of a wispier singing voice. Yeah, and it works for this song about druids. <laughs> 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 and oh, how they danced, <laughs> the little children of Stone Edge. <laughs> It's, it's like, like this, like you, hood up, and like this, like glittery well, I mean, hood. And they, I mean, the album is out. Like they, there is a Spinal Tap album. Mm-hmm. I think. I mean, it's yes, it's the soundtrack, but as a standalone <laughs> rock album, it's not terrible. It's fun music. It's yeah. really fun. Like, and it just happens to have hilarious lyrics. But Stonehenge right. is a legit banger. I love that yeah. song. Yeah. Uh, my second good <laughs> is. Uh, uh, the editing, the editing completely like that. And just, you know, as you said, the improvisation and the performance, those two things together make this movie. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the, the fact that they were able to take, you know, just dozens of hours of footage that they did and weave it together in a way that doesn't tell a complicated story, but does tell the story about the band, as well as in particular, the editing around the relationship between David and Nigel and just the little subtle cutaways to like reaction shots from one of the two, you know, how David is reacting to Janine, how Nigel is reacting to Janine's presence. Uh, it's, it, you know, in the scene at the end, right before, you know, they um, they go out without Nigel and Nigel just pauses for a moment, you know, have a good show. Yeah. Like it's it's just it's edited so cleverly uh, and, it, and it gives just enough story structure to, you know, to have a narrative to the movie as opposed to just kind of a jumble of scenes. Uh, and my last good is uh, the drummer mythology, <laughs> just this series of drummers who just keep dying, whether it's a bizarre gardening accident that's best left left unsolved, or someone choking at someone else's vomit, or just ex- exploding drummers, <laughs> right? Who were immediately replaced mid set. Yeah, it's uh, like it's expected. Yeah, just just the dozens of drummers that uh, that keep dying, and the band just keeps churning out. Because as Mick says at one point, you know, the law of averages. Right. Yeah. As he's in a bath. He's like, like taking a, a bubble bath. bath. In a bubble bath. The law of and Marty, averages. And Marty's he's, sitting on the toilet yeah. interviewing him. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and the drummer Mick is clearly spooked, but he's trying to, again, he's oh, trying yeah. to convince himself. Yeah. You know, like law of averages. Law of averages. I'll, I'll, can't I'll be to, fine. It can't happen to every drummer. <laughs> uh, so what are your two bads? Oh, very nitpicky, of yep. course, for a movie of this quality. Uh, my first one, and we touched on it a couple of times, there's just, there's no real plot for the film, um, which if you know that going in is fine, but if mm-hmm. you think you're going to be, wa- if, you're, if you're tricked into watching this movie, I could definitely see where if you're not in on the joke, you're going to be disappointed. Um, because it's, it's funny in a lot of ways. I wouldn't call it in the same style of movie as like a Napoleon Dynamite, but it's, but it's funny because it's just situationally funny. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's not played up. You know, not all of it is played up like full service laughter. So uh, there's just not a real plot to the film, uh, which is fine. Again, I'm being nitpicky. Um, you know, but on top of it, there's also not, you know, it's a documentary, obviously a mockumentary, but it's a documentary, but there's no message behind it either. You know, I, you know, I feel like, if a documentarian's putting a film together, there's some sort of message they're trying to get across. Uh, and, and otherwise, it's it's just more like a, you know, like a real world s show or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, but again, I even have in in, in uh, parentheses nitpicky. Like yeah. I know I'm being nitpicky. My second bad is they un- they just underutilized Harry Shearer. Um, you know, and that's to say even if even if he was perfectly utilized, that's still underutilized. Um, you know, Michael McKeon and Christopher Guest clearly are the the leaders of the band. They are clearly the two thirds of the leads of the movie, and they are and and they are the the improvisational duo of the trio. Um, and it's just funny because Harry's he's just always there with a little one liner or something, yeah. and uh, and so he's he's great. He's absolutely great. I just. It's just a little underutilized and in, in the shadow of the other two, but that's a bass player for you. Yep, that's the bass player. <laughs> How about you? As usual, you stole two of my three, so um, <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to go the Harry Shearer route, and you did because yeah, oh, because we share a brainstem. <laughs> yes, um, so we do. One is one of my bads is the the plot conflict resolved very quickly. 
Uh, specifically yeah. the Nigel conflict. It, there's literally a five minute runtime turnaround between when mm-hmm. Nigel quits and when Nigel rejoins. It, it's it's very quick. And again, yeah. and not that it's bad, because again, you don't want a movie like this to linger too long. But it's like right. he, he he's out and then he's back in like literally a few minutes in the runtime. Yeah, right there now. was there was one gig. He yeah. didn't finish the Air Force gig. Then they had the puppet show gig, and then that. Yeah. And so he, he missed one spot. Yeah, he one full gig. He, yeah, he didn't play after a puppet show. Because so. <laughs> <laughs> the puppet show was the uh, had the top billing. Um, right. The other one, I'll say, um, why not more Spinal Tap content? I know they they have put out other stuff over the years, and they've mm-hmm. done like 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 gigs and things like that. Yeah. But, I would have, I don't know, I'm probably being selfish, and you don't, sometimes you don't want to ask for too much of a good thing, but right, I would love yeah. to, I would, I would have loved to see some kind oh, of Spinal yeah. Tap follow-up, like a where are they now kind of Spinal Tap. Right. Doesn't, it wouldn't even have to be a feature-length film, you know, just something. No. Maybe like web episodes. Yeah, yeah, it'd be fun. It'd be real fun. All right, Oz, what's your one huh? Uh, my one huh, and this one really was confusing, um... You know, we see the band played up as being forgotten and has beens and where are they now, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yet every audience they showed that they played in front of was packed. You know, they they always had a aside from the puppet show, which just because they were <laughs> at a theme park, but it's like they they were still they still drew a decent sized audience. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was my huh. It's like, why were they being played up as being forgotten and has beens when they were still drawing a decent sized crowd they still had an album party to kick off the show you know to kick off the movie like they were they were a draw and uh and 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 so that was my huh was like i'd understand you know outside and we didn't talk about it but outside of like the album signing you know where nobody showed up that was really what inspired this huh they have an album signing and literally nobody shows up at the record store to have their album signed. But then later, but then that night they show them at the concert and the place is packed. So, yeah. I skipped over the album signing before just for time's sake, but I just love yeah. the, oh, they cut to it and there's nobody there and Derek's just blowing his nose. And that's the only thing you hear. <laughs> he just keeps blowing his nose over and over. <laughs> yeah. And, and but that was really the inspiration for that, huh? So I'm like, yeah. like they, they they had a full show, but yet nobody signed up for an album. Yeah. So, oh well. What yeah. about you? What's your huh? My huh, and, and again, you can jump to some conclusions on, on this. Um, did David and Nigel apparently didn't need or use cucumbers, but Derek did. Does Derek have some kind of problem, <laughs> or you know, is it just a ima- imagined? Or I just you know, why does why does Derek need a cucumber? I, I kind of feel bad for him. I don't think it's a problem. He just maybe couldn't compare to the other two. I mean, I, Who I, knows? I suppose you get to know each other well on a tour, but like, right. Well, know, especially just... when you, when you all have matching herpes, <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> matching face herpes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Your matching cold sores give away how well you do know each mm-hmm. other. Yeah. Well, that's my huh, I guess. So yeah, that's it's still it's still funny. <laughs> yeah, that, that's 1984's "This Is Spinal Tap," Oz, and we bring this month to a conclusion. Oh, that, that concludes, what a month it was! That concludes our March five movie march of yes, uh, movies about music. Yes, yes, Oz, Oz, what do we have in store next month? We will be kicking off. Are you ready for this? The sixth month of this podcast. This is episode 22 you're listening to right now. On the now. road to 20,000. <laughs> That's right. We are kicking off April. April's theme is, now hear me out, because we're going to, there's a play on this a couple months later. Mm-hmm. April's theme is creepy kids in movies. Yes. Creepy kids in movies. This, this will be a more horror-centric month, um, which I've got the first movie. This is a four-week month. Um, and so we just have the four creepy kids in movies. And we kick off next week with a fairly recent movie um, called Goodnight Mommy. I've never seen it. Nor have I. I, um, I'm, I'm excited to because it's been on my radar quite a bit. Uh, but I don't, I, I've, I've never seen it. Um, let me tell you, 2014. It's subtitled 20, too, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is a foreign film, which is okay. Uh, because we, we're telling you about the movie. If you are anti-foreign films, it is an Austrian movie. 
in, a, in the German language. So good night, mommy. The synopsis is twin boys move to a new house with their mother after she has face-changing cosmetic surgery. But under the bandages is someone the boys don't recognize. Uh oh. Yeah. So, good night, mommy. Uh, is the creepy kids in movies kickoff for April? Was this the sequel to the kids' book, Good Night Moon? Uh, yeah. I okay. it, I don't think it's a sequel. I think it's the, a reimagining of. Oh, good night okay. Moon. Okay, got it. Yeah, that makes yeah. complete sense. That's that. That's big in the in the in the the twenty teens mm-hmm. is reimaginings of films. So yeah, this is yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I can't wait to get to the reimagining of "Give a Mouse a Cookie." Mm. That we'll be, we'll be watching. Or the reimagining um, of "Everybody Poops." <laughs> right. yeah, that that true. That is true. <laughs> Told uh, through a Gen Z lens. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's called a human centipede. <laughs> <laughs> everybody that's poops. The human and, centipede. Everybody poops yeah. and then some. <laughs> yeah, that's the human centipede. Everybody poops poop. <laughs> Uh, and so uh, that is wrapping up the month. Uh, we are, let's talk about flicks. Uh, you can catch us on your favorite podcasting app, social media, et cetera, et cetera, website, YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. Tell your friends. Tell them uh, all. We, yeah, tell <laughs> tell everyone in the world and beyond. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and so uh, that gives us a wrap for, for March, and we will be back next week. You're taking yourself a nice little vacation, so I hope you enjoy it. And Thank we will you, Oz. Turn when you get back. Uh, for Let's Talk About Flicks, I'm Oz. I'm Curtis. And we will see you guys next month.